Hello everyone, D&D Breakfast Club here. I'm going to start part 2 with the same map that we used in the last tutorial. When I click open it brings up all my old maps. If you need to find where yours are stored, you can find them here under Username, App Data, Roaming, Wonderdraft, and then Maps. Go ahead and open your map. Before we begin, I want to just clean up a few more parts of this map, clean up some of the edges, get rid of some of the land masses that are off the coastlines. I'm clicking the lower landmass tool. I'm going to drag it along some of the edges here and there to give it a little bit of a, a better shape to my eye. As I'm scrolling around the map, I'm clicking the middle mouse button in and moving it. Right here, I'm going to click the Raise Landmass tool. As I drag it around, I want to make this peninsula a little more pronounced. I'll increase the roughness as I'm dragging it. I'm going to try and click and drag a little bit quicker. By doing that, it spaces out the rough edges and it gives some little island shapes off the coast. Here, I'll click the lower landmass tool. I'm going to remove these little bitty islands and these little bitty land bits that are produced during the map generation. I know last video I said I'm going to start with symbols right away, but first I'm actually going to change the coastline. Here I'm going to click the water tab. There's many features that you can change. I'm going to change the coastline style. There's six different styles. Irregular blend, uniform band, uniform blend, uniform outline, three tiered, and hatch pattern. Each effect looks quite different. You can create a thicker coastline border and a thicker land border by raising or lowering these slides. You can also change the coastline color by clicking this box and selecting a different color that you like. And now we can get to the symbols. Click symbols and you can click M for mountains. There's a few different types of mountains you can select from. There's some clouds, there's some hills. We're just going to use the mountains for right now. These are the small mountains. These are the large painted mountains. And these are the pencil mountains. I'm going to go ahead and use these pencil mountains for this map. Pencil mountains change the color depending on the land brush tool. So you can place down the mountains and then once you brush a color over them, it's going to change to that background color. I'll decrease the mountains all the way down and this is the smallest that they will get on this map. If I was using a larger world map, you'd see more landmass and the mountains would appear smaller to that map. I'll start this mountain range with a scale size of 15. I'm clicking and dragging while I hold down the mouse button. By changing the placement rate and by changing the placement density, I can change the appearance of how the mountain ranges look. If I increase the placement rate, just holding down the mouse button, you'll see that they're placing quicker than it was. If I decrease the placement rate and I click and hold the mouse button down while I'm dragging around, you can see the difference. 
The same goes with the placement density. I'll go back to the default placement rate, click and drag with full density, and you can see that it's placing all together. If I increase the placement rate all the way up and the density, it clumps this mountain range up. Sometimes this does look good, but I usually stick with the default settings when I'm making my maps. I'll use the scroll mouse button down and make the symbol scale smaller. And then I'll go back up a little. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to scroll up on the middle mouse wheel or scroll down. It'll change the mountain type that I want to use. I'm going to drag to the top of the map and add in some mountain ranges on this small continent. Lower the symbol scale down. Put a little more here on this continent. Here I'm going to actually increase the density a little to make them more clumped. back to default setting and last I have an idea of what I want to see on this small island so I'm going to use the shift scroll and make a different looking mountain each time I click so I shift scroll down click shift scroll down find the one I like and then I click and then I shift scroll down some more, find another one that I like and click. Don't forget when you do something and you don't like it, you can hit control Z to undo that change. Now I'm going to place down my trees. For this map I'm going to use penciled pines, the same as the mountains, they will allow them to be brushed a different color. Depending on the style of forest you like, some people increase the density and the placement rate to maximum and place down giant clumped forests. Other people like to use the default settings. Makes them a little more spread out. You see a little spray of trees here and there. I'm going to use a mix of both for this map. So I'll increase the placement rate and the placement density to maximum to start placing down these forests. I don't have any rhyme or reason of how I'm placing them. I'm not trying to make them look like something exact. I don't have any shapes in mind. Now I'll decrease the placement rate and the placement density and I'm gonna place some trees around the edges of the forest. It makes it look a little more natural. Around the mountains, I'm going to change the placement rate all the way down. As I click and drag around, you can see that the trees are now very sporadically placed. When you have a tree that gets into another symbol's type, for example here, it got into the mountain, if you try to use the eraser tool, it's going to erase both things that are overlapping. Right here, I'm going to make a forest. I'll do some... Actually, I'm going to do quite a bit of forest, and I'm going to speed this video up just so you don't have to watch it. It's going to be pretty quick either way.
The last thing I'm going to show you for this tutorial is the rivers tool. When you click the water link on the left hand side, then you'll click the river tool, R. Left click to start your river. By scrolling the mouse up or down, you can change the width of the river while you're making the angles and the turns on the river. Each time you click, you make another point in that river bend. So here I click, click, click. Again, click, move the mouse around, click, move the mouse around, click. This way you can make your rivers have more of a natural look and you can control where they're going. Double click or right click to finalize river placement. I'm just going to throw some rivers here and there. I'm not doing anything in particular and I want to get this map finished in a decent amount of time. I'm just choosing what looks good to me and what looks the best to my eye. I know some of these rivers are going to be going through the forest that I already placed down. In the very end, what I'm going to do is clean that up, but I'm going to make that the last step that I do. This looks a little bit unnatural. I'm going to change it. This is going to be all of part two of the tutorials. On part three, we're going to use more of the symbols. We're going to do some coloring and we're going to do some labels. Hey everyone, if you like this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, go ahead and like the video, comment, anything you can do to help support this channel is much appreciated.